dynamic violence. Sammy Jackson. Spectacular thrill. Godzilla, king of the monsters. Fantastic beyond comprehension. The Godzilla series is a long-running Japanese film franchise that has spanned almost 65 years, beginning in 1954 and has seen over 30 films, two TV shows, multiple comic series, and a bunch of merchandise. With Godzilla King of the Monsters set to release in May 2019, many people are now interested in the film and the series as a whole. However, for many, the series can be a bit daunting to get into. Where do you start with over 30 films and many more in the pipeline? Well, that's where I come in. Hopefully. Whether you know nothing about Godzilla, if you're a casual fan that wants more, or even if you're an older fan who watched the movies as a kid and needs a refresher course, I'm here to help you learn all you need to know about the undisputed King of the Monsters. There are at the time of this video 29 Japanese made Godzilla films, two anime films with a third set to release in Japanese theaters this November, two American films with two more releasing May 2019 and May 2020, and a large scale plan for more Japanese made films after that. This makes for a grand total of 33 films available right now, and 36 as of 2020. Yeah, and you thought a Fast and Furious film was a lot. So that's a lot of movies. Where the hell do you even begin with these? Well, luckily, it's a lot easier than you may think. The franchise's films are broken up into three to four different periods based on their release. These being the Showa series, the Heisei series, the Millennium series, and now the fourth series I mentioned does not yet have an official title as it is not officially recognized. This is the timeline we are currently in. For the sake of this video, I will be calling this the post-millennium era. We'll discuss that further down the line once we get to it. So let's begin where it all started with the Showa period. Godzilla, the classic monster movie that started it all, can now be yours in this incredible collector's home video offer. The Showa period is the original series of 15 films released between 1954 and 1975. By the way, fun drinking game, take a shot every time I say 1954 in this video. You'll be more trash in Tokyo by the end of it. Now for those of you who don't know anything about Godzilla, or only have a casual knowledge, what do you think of when you think of Godzilla? You probably have two distinct images in your head. The first of a giant nuclear dinosaur breathing fire and destroying Tokyo. And the second of these being goofy old cheesy monster movies that are basically just giant wrestling matches. Fighting giant bugs and shrimp. If that is indeed the image you thought of, this is the time period where those things happen. If you were to sum up the show period in a word, Aside from the original 1954 film, this first series is goofy. It's silly and lighthearted, perfect for showing your kids for the most part. For the most part. Yikes. However, this obviously isn't how the series started. As many know, the original Japanese film, specifically the Japanese version of the film, I'll be addressing the Americanized version separately, was a dark disaster film where Godzilla himself was an allegory for the atomic bomb. In fact, the opening of the film is a direct reference to events that happened that same year. It's actually pretty weird to watch 1954, then go 10 years forward, watch Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, 10 years more, and see Mechagodzilla. But I digress. Before we get to the films themselves, let's get some background work done. Godzilla was created in 1954, owned by Toho Co. Limited, a film company in Japan that, besides Godzilla, is known for films such as Seven Samurai, Matango, House, and distributing the Pokemon films. As for the people behind them, director Ishiro Honda is typically credited for being the father of Godzilla, along with producer Tamayuki Tanaka. Eiji Tsuburaya being the special effects director and pioneer of the suitmation technique. This is the word given for the tried and true method of making many of these films, being a guy in a rubber suit. Akira Fukubi is the composer responsible for many of the iconic themes that play throughout the series. Haru Nakajima is also the man responsible for playing Godzilla himself in the bulk of the films in this first period. The Showa series, as I previously mentioned, has 15 films released over the course of 21 years. Also, I'm going to say this now so there's no confusion, many of these films have multiple names due to localization and such. Those will be listed too along with the names I will be referring to them as. 
These films are as follows. Godzilla 1954, Godzilla Raids Again, King Kong vs. Godzilla, Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah the Free-Headed Monster, Invasion of Astro Monster, Ebra Horror of the Deep, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, Godzilla's Revenge, Godzilla vs. Hedera, Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and Terror of Mechagodzilla. The series started in 1954 and got a sequel one year later with Raids Again. Afterwards, the series went on a seven-year hiatus. At this point, it wasn't planned to be a long-lasting series. They just made a movie that did tremendously well in Japan, and then got a lackluster sequel one year later. It wasn't until 1956, when the American version came out, Godzilla became a household name across the globe, unless you're Big Boss. Hey Snake, you ever heard of Godzilla King of Monsters? No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. During this lull, other Toho Kaiju were created, including Rodan in 1956, Varen in 58, and Mafra in 61. All three of these creatures will then later be added into the God series in some capacity. 1962 was a 30th production year for Toho, so to celebrate the use a treatment being floated around by Willis O'Brien, the special effects wizard responsible for the design and effects of King Kong, which would become King Kong vs. Godzilla. After this, the series would be a yearly franchise from 1964 to 1969, and from 1971 to 75. While there are no plans to end the Godzilla series after this point, the 1975 entry Terror Mecha Godzilla was the lowest grossing film in the series at that point, and was only recently dethroned of that title with Godzilla Planet of the Monsters in 2017. These low sales brought the series to a temporary end after 21 long years of monster mayhem. He needs no introduction. His glaring eyes and gnashing teeth, not to mention his habit of destroying everything in sight, has made this overgrown lizard a superstar. But in his 22nd film, Godzilla vs. the Destroyer, to be released December 9th in Japan, the 42-year-old monster will finally meet his end. Godzilla will die. The second series of films is known as the Heisei Period. For those wondering about these names, the Showa and Heisei Period are named after the Japanese emperors at the time. As for the time these films were released, the Heisei series lasts from 1984 until 1995, with a total of seven films. Godzilla 1984, as you can tell by the year, is the series' 30th anniversary film. In fact, the Godzilla series has yet to miss a single anniversary year. Good job, guys, you did it. The film was meant to be a return to the series after almost a decade of silence. At least if you lived in Japan, because here in the West, these films came out whenever the fuck they wanted to. Godzilla vs. Gaigan came out in 1972 in Japan, but it didn't release in America until 1977. Spain didn't even get it from 1980. For those of you who remember when these were coming out, you don't even gone for like three to five years, not to mention all the reruns on television. There was no absence at all. Then, suddenly, at the height of his fame, he retired from motion pictures. Yeah, sure. Now, the Heisei series in general is known for being a return to form. Gone are the days of the goofy, maddening antics of Jet Jaguar and Minya. The Heisei series is more grounded and serious overall. We get the formation of G-Force, a military branch dedicated to stopping Godzilla. The films treat him like a natural disaster again. The films are all mostly very well-rounded and really easy to get a hold of. But anyway, Godzilla 1984 is also the beginning of a trend with the series. And that trend being that the 1954 film is law and nothing else matters. Godzilla 1984 acts as a direct sequel to Godzilla 1954, ignoring all the other films in the series up to that point. While all the show films were all part of the same continuity, they are all very much their own movies. You can watch one movie in a vacuum and understand everything you need to know. Not so with the Heisei series. All of these movies in this period are direct sequels that pick up where the last one left off. Speaking of, the films that were released in this period are as follows. Godzilla 1984, Godzilla vs. Biollante, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, Godzilla vs. Mafra, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and finally Godzilla vs. Destroya. This is the final film in the series, and was meant to be the last film in the series as a whole until 2004 for the 50th anniversary, and paved the way for America to make their own films. Thus, in 1998, the American Godzilla film came out. Okay, hang on, let me see here. Uh, this is a part of the video where I'm supposed to say I hate the 98 film, and that sucks, and it killed the franchise. Yep, 
because it sure did kill the franchise. Did, hey, remember in 06 when they killed the Sonic franchise? Hey, remember when Federation Force killed the Metroid franchise? Hey, remember when Capcom killed Mega Man? Hey, remember when Konami killed all the franchises? Oh, wait, wait, that one's real. Well, that does it for the Haste series. However, I do just want to point out one quick misconception about this series here. This is Godzilla 1998. This is Godzilla 2000. One was made by Tricer Pictures in 1998, the other by Toho in Japan in 1999. These are not the same film. In the year 2000, Tristar Pictures did a dub of 2000 and released it theatrically in the USA. However, this caused some confusion in the general public who thought 2000 was a sequel to the 1998 film, and in some cases thinking they were the same film. This is not the case. I just wanted to address this in case anyone was unaware. Also of note is that right after the series ended in 1995, Mothra was given her own film trilogy. He's made 29 films during a career that spanned over 50 years, so it's about time Godzilla got a star in the Walk of Fame. Yes, the smoke spewing monster is in the U.S. promoting his latest Japanese sequel called Godzilla Final Wars. Godzilla thanked all his fans and promised not to destroy the world. So, due to the negative reception to Godzilla 98, Toho immediately got back into gear and made Godzilla 2000 Millennium in 1999 as a way to say, THIS IS HOW YOU DO IT! The version of Godzilla in the 98 film was also renamed Zilla for all future appearances, mostly relegated to comics. The third series of films is dubbed the Millennium Era, due to that being the name of the first film. Also speaking of the first film, guess what? Four of the six films in this era are direct sequels to the 1954 film. The films in this era are as follows, Godzilla 2000 Millennium, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, GMK, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, Godzilla Tokyo SOS, and Godzilla Final Wars. The exceptions to the reboot rule are Tokyo SOS, which is a direct sequel to Against Mechagodzilla, and Final Wars, which, aside from a reference to 1954, shares no continuity with any other film in the franchise. It is purely meant as a standalone anniversary title. The Millennium films are all pretty well-rounded, if a bit standard in a lot of cases. Tonally, they are comparable to Heisei, but a bit goofier in some cases. One case specifically being the goofiest, as it is just one big show tree. The Millennium series ended with 2004's Godzilla Final Wars. Final Wars. When will you learn not to put the word final in your horror franchises? Have you not figured out yet, you stupid idiots? You may have noticed one film in there I call GMK, an acronym. That is because of the movie's full title. And gosh darn is it the best title ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Giant monsters all out attack over four days, point oh two, final chapter prologue, adventure 2.5, final mix, battle, director's cut, electric boogaloo, HD remix, and knuckles. Featuring Dante from Devil May Cry. After Final Wars, the series ended again and remained dormant for a decade, this time for real. Though there were attempts to bring it back, for example, in the Telltale film Always Sunset on Bird Street 2, Godzilla makes a cameo during the dream sequence. And there were attempts to make a Godzilla short from throughout the 2000s for IMAX theaters. This project never actually took this form, but instead took another form. form was the 2014 Legendary Pictures Godzilla. Now this is where the post-millennium era comes into play. This is where things get spread out quite a bit. Currently there are three series going on within the post-millennium era. There is the Legendary MonsterVerse, Toho Films, and the Anime Trilogy. We'll start with the one people are most familiar with. There are two films currently out in the MonsterVerse, these being Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island. Yes, Kong Skull Island is canon to Godzilla 2014. If you did not know or haven't figured it out yet, after Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019, in May 2020, the next Monster Rose film will indeed be Godzilla vs. Kong. As for what comes after that, we don't know. 
Both films have been well received, with people praising 2014 for not being like the 98 film, and Kong for being a lot of fun. Meanwhile, after Godzilla 2014 was released, as a direct response, Toho once again got to work on a new Japanese film. However, unlike the 90s where it was a knee-jerk, you did it wrong, here's how you're supposed to do it response, this was a, oh shit, people still watch this? So in 2016, Toho released their own film, Shin Godzilla. As for his reception, oh, there's no way this can be good. I mean, it was made for a cash on the American film. This has to suck. I mean, uh, oh, oh, damn. Yeah, I know, seriously, Shin Godzilla was released to widespread acclaim in Japan, with most other audiences liking the film quite a bit as well. Fun fact, the directors of this film were Shinji Higuchi from the live-action Attack on Titan films and Hedy Akiyano, creator of Evangelion. However, there are currently no plans for a sequel, as Shin Godzilla was made during the lull between Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island in 2017 in order to fill a gap. Toho, knowing how successful the Hollywood films are, did not want to compete with their own IP and decided they would not make any more live-action films until after 2020, when the current Monster Rush saga is over. Now, this does not necessarily mean the Monster Rush ends in 2020. We don't know what happens in 2020. We'll have to wait and see. However, keyword in that last paragraph, live-action. As in, they can still make animated films. And that they did with the current Godzilla anime trilogy. The first film, Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, released in Japan November 2017. Now, while Shin Godzilla released in July 2016, it did not get an American Blu-ray release until August 2017. That's a pretty long time for a movie that won seven Japanese Oscars to get released. So I'd imagine we'd have to wait quite a bit for the Planet of the Monsters to release. Wait, what? Yeah, Netflix picked up the rights for international distribution for the anime trilogy. If you have a Netflix account, you can watch both Planet of the Monsters and its sequel, City on the Edge of Battle, right now. This also means that following that month and a half schedule, Planet Eater, name pending, comes out in Japan in November. So the Netflix release will likely be in January once again. Oh, and I uh, shouldn't have to say this, but all these films have no connection to 1954 or any other films that came before them. Aside from the actual sequel films like King of the Monsters and the second and third anime films, now, I said earlier that we don't know what happens after 2020. That's specifically referring to the MonsterVerse. As for Toho, they recently announced their upcoming World of Godzilla initiative. Essentially, after 2020, they want to release a steady stream of Godzilla and Kaiju films, with some monsters even getting their own solo films outside of Godzilla again. They cite the MCU as the main blueprint for this, which is weird considering this is the third time Godzilla has done this kind of thing. One of them is happening right now, but I digress. So that is all the series of Godzilla films. For well, a quick recap, here is a look at the timelines at play here. Please note that some timelines feature films that aren't actually Godzilla films, but share monsters that later appear in Godzilla films. As the timeline scrolls, feel free to pause in order to read them. They can give you a good idea how to watch all these movies to get the biggest picture. with more Godzilla on the Cartoon Network. If we survive! Hey, boyos and girlos. If you want to follow William on social media, you can do that on one of the following websites. So that covers all three Godzilla film periods. Now, as easy as it would be to just tell someone to watch them in order, that isn't exactly the best method for everyone. It wasn't even how I got into the series. So what do I recommend to people to get into the series? Well, if you want to start seriously, I recommend one of three films to start. 
either begin with the original 1954 film, the 2014 American film, or 2016's Shin Godzilla. These films all stand on their own, and I recommend them to everyone as a starter on the series. They all have a much more serious tone and are more grounded in reality. As realistic as a giant mutated dinosaur that shoots atomic fire out of his mouth and has two brains to get, at least. After that, it really depends on what you want. If you want more of the sillier, lighthearted affair, go to the Showa series. Be aware, though, that the rights of these films internationally is a bit weird with the licensing. As of now, Kraken has the rights to Ebra, Horror of the Deep, Godzilla vs. Hedera, and Godzilla vs. Gigan, while Criterion, yes, that Criterion, has the rights for the remaining Showa films. However, they have yet to actually release any of them on home media aside from the original 1954 film. Sort of with its American edit. Yeah, I'll get to those too, don't worry. So if you want to watch these, the crack releases are very cheap and easy to get on Amazon and such. The rest, however, you'll either have to deal with video on demand, comment reruns, or track down an older out-of-print copy of one of the films on the aftermarket. Otherwise, my personal suggestion to really get into the series is by watching the Heisei series. These films are all worth your time and follow a linear progression. They take place in the same continuity, which makes them much easier to follow at times. Except for maybe one of them. For more information about that, watch the link video by clicking the card above. They'll explain everything about that movie there. As for how to get them, Kraken has the rights to Godzilla 1984, Miramax has Biollante, while Sony has all of the others. You can get all of the Hasty series very easily on DVD or Blu-ray. In fact, the Sony Blu-rays are all double packs and a pretty good price. So getting all of them is really easy. My only gripe with the two packs is that there weren't enough movies to fit the two packs, and they already did a separate single release of 2000, so for some reason they put Godzilla vs. Destroya along with Mega Gearus. So if you get all of the Sony packs, the movies won't be in chronological order on your shelf. Assuming you care about that in the first place. I do. As for the Millennium series, Sony has all of the Millennium rights. So the double packs were still there, going strong. Post Millennium isn't that hard either. Legendary's films are all American releases, so you can find them at any old Walmart or Target. You might already own them anyway. Shin Godzilla is being distributed by Funimation and can be purchased on Blu-ray or DVD very easily as well. The anime films are available to watch on Netflix, assuming you have a Netflix account, otherwise you're out of luck. So. Just for fun, here's my bottom 5 films in the series, and my top 5. Not every film is a winner, that's to be expected from a series spanning 60 plus years and 30 plus films. Some of these movies are pretty darn bad, some are really good. Now keep in mind, these are my favorites, and not necessarily what I consider the absolute best films. If you want that, yeah, 1954 and Shin Godzilla are the best films, objectively speaking. So, my top 5 favorite films in the series. Number 5. Godzilla Final Wars. This film was actually very divisive among the fandom, with some in the fandom hating it outright, and others finding it pretty fun. I personally find it harmless and a lot of fun. One of the biggest complaints people have with the series is that there's a lot of human scenes that aren't very exciting to a lot of people. In this film, they substitute the scientists with the X-Men. So you get scenes of monsters fighting and mutants fighting aliens. It's a win-win situation. This film was the 50th anniversary film and is a tribute to the Showa series. It's basically a modern day remake of Destroy All Monsters with a different lineup. Don't take this one too seriously, it's just for fun. Number 4, Godzilla 1954. It's the original. I said objectively it's probably the best one, but there's still some films I'd watch before it. But goddamn, it's an amazing film. There's a reason the Criterion Collection scooped it up when they could. Fun fact, it wasn't until 2006 that the non-Japanese audiences were able to watch the original unedited film. Before then, all we had was Raymond Burr. Number 3, Shin Godzilla. Yeah, I think Shin Godzilla tops the original. It's a modern-day remake of the 54 film, replacing the World War II bombings and the Lucky Dragon incident with a story that recalls the March 2011 Fukushima disasters. It's a very political film that might not make as much sense to Western audiences but if you figure it out, it's one of the best in the series. Go watch it if you can. Number 2, Godzilla vs. Destroya. Best in the Heisei series in my opinion. Destroya is a badass monster and elevates the film so much for me. The plot centers around Godzilla's heart essentially going into meltdown, so G-Force must find a way to stop before Godzilla blows, literally, and effectively causes a nuclear apocalypse. Some scenes feel more like an alien movie, giving it a horror vibe. Number 1, 
GMK. Yep, this is my favorite film in the series. It starts off a bit slow, but by the end, it's full speed ahead. This is easily the standout film of the Millennium series. It pulls a 180 and has King Ghidorah be one of the good guys for once. I can't even really think of too much to say why it's my favorite without giving away specific moments. Just go watch it. Alright, now for the bottom five. This is probably going to be controversial because I don't actually hate the 98 film. Boo, hiss. So let's start. Number five, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. It's a Millennium movie where Godzilla has to fight a giant bug. If you do the map, that's the sixth time he's had to do this. The film is just kind of boring to me, and the only really interesting aspect I find is the usage of black holes in this film. No, really. Number four, Godzilla Raids Again. The second film in this series, and again, I just find it dull. Not too exciting. And Geras comes and goes, and the end is pretty anticlimactic. To some people, this is cited as the worst in the series. While I'm not that harsh, I agree that's not that great. Number three, Godzilla vs. Hedorah. I wanted to like this movie just because all the batshit insane nonsense in it, but whenever that stuff isn't happening, it's, again, dull. Those moments stick out just more because there really isn't that much going on aside from that. Hedorah is a cool looking monster and I like him having multiple forms. Design wise, I think he's one of my favorites. If you want to describe this movie really quickly, it's 1970s. This movie is the 70s. Take that as you will. Number 2. Son of Godzilla. Kamakuris and Kumanga are lame. Minya sucks, and this movie isn't very exciting. I can see young kids loving this movie, so they can watch it just fine, but everyone else can do a lot better. Speaking of, number one, surprise, surprise, Godzilla's Revenge. This movie is universally hailed as the worst by the majority of the fanbase, and yeah, I agree with them. It's dull, all the fights are reused from previous films besides one, and while that fight is entertaining in its own right, the movie is barely over an hour long and still drags so much. Steer clear unless you're very young. Which, if you are young, why are you watching this? I've said fuck like five times already. Where are your parents? Okay, I know what you're all really here for. Damn monsters! Ah yeah, let's get to it. So who are the main cast of monsters? I'm gonna do a roll call for all y'all. The main monsters you'll encounter are as follows. Godzilla, Anguirus, Rodan, Mafra, King Kong, King Ghidorah, Ebra, Kamakuris, Minya, Kumanga, Gorosaurus, Baragon, Varen, Manda, Gabra, Hedera, Gigan, Megalon, Jet Jaguar, Mechagodzilla 1, King Caesar, Titanosaurus, Biolante, Mecha King Ghidorah, Thatra, Mecha Godzilla 2, Baby Godzilla, Space Godzilla, Little Godzilla, Mogira, Destroya, Godzilla Jr. Uh, they're all the same character, but they go by different names in each movie. Zilla, Orga, Mega Garrus, Kamibus, Kiryu, also known as Mecha Godzilla 3, Monster X, Kaiser Ghidorah, Muto, Servum, and Mechagodzilla 4, also known as Mechagodzilla City. I omitted some that aren't quite as important or giant. Like, does anyone count the sea lice from the beginning of Godzilla 1984? Did they ever make a toy of that? No, seriously, did they? Okay, so I said before I would lightly touch on the American edited versions of some of the films. The most famous course being the 1956 Godzilla King of the Monsters which is the version of the original 1954 film that the West saw. This version famously added scenes with Raymond Burr playing the character Steve Martin, no not that Steve Martin, a news reporter from America in Japan to report on the fishing boat incident and witnesses firsthand the devastation of Godzilla. The film was not dubbed in any way, instead they added a translator for Burr. The translations of course are not actually accurate to what the original script said, as the film is more of a straight monster movie, and tones down the nuclear subtext since, you know, World War II was only a decade ago, and the first film is inherently anti-American in its politics due to America being responsible for the bomb test that caused Lucky Dragon incident in the first place. There's also the American cut of Godzilla Raids Again, which is well known for being dubbed in a way that makes it not a Godzilla film at all. They literally renamed it Gigantus the Fire Monster as to not confuse people into thinking it was Godzilla. Even they didn't like it that much. 
King Kong vs. Godzilla is another famous example. I've never actually seen the Japanese version, but in the American version, they add a bunch of new scenes taking place on a satellite that is reporting on everything taking place. Basically just to explain the plot to us dumb yanks. There's also another famous edit I'll talk about at the end that causes a lot of confusion. Otherwise, it's mostly just simple cuts and edits to shorten the runtime or for censorship reasons. Like in Terror of Mechagodzilla, there's a scene in the original Japanese version where the female lead is seen topless. This was of course cut out of the American version, though they still left all this in. The last major edit that comes to mind is Godzilla 1985. This is the American version of Godzilla 1984, brought over by Roger Corman's New World Pictures. Since the Toho films decided to reboot and be a direct sequel to 1954, and since we didn't have the original 1954 yet, they decided, hey, let's make a direct sequel to our version. So they brought back Raymond Burr to reprise his role as Steve Martin. New scenes were once again added with American actors, giving this cut a more comedic feel overall. Though Burr takes his part seriously and tries to whip everyone back into shape. They also edited a scene where a Russian attempts to stop a nuclear missile from launching but dies before he's able to, and made it look like he launched the missile with his dying breath because hashtag 1980s, hashtag Cold War, hashtag better dead than red. Oh, and there's a lot of Dr. Pepper product placement. It's weird. This cut of the film was only ever released on VHS over here. No DVD or Blu-ray release exists yet, so either track down a VHS copy of this version or get a bootleg. One last edit of note is the English dub of Godzilla 2000. Now, unlike the other big edits I talked about, this one didn't film extra streams for the English audiences. The film is purely Japanese. However, like some of the other films, it was cut down and the script was slightly tweaked. The American version of the film cut down the original 105 minute runtime to 88 minutes. The film was also giving a slightly more comedic edge to it because, you know, America just can't take this guy seriously, can they? It's funny because the film was dubbed in English in Hong Kong by Toho as is standard practice for them. However, TriStar went ahead and redubbed it anyway with Asian American actors. Aside from that, this sounds like any other edit, right? Well, the funny thing is that Toho themselves considers TriStar's cut of the film better than their own cut, saying that they fixed the pacing quite a bit. Yeah, the one time America did it better. Until maybe 2014, depending on who you are. Before we go, I want to address some misconceptions people have about the series, and tell you where you can go for more Godzilla-related content. One question some of you might have is regarding Godzilla's alignment. Is he a good guy? A bad guy? Generally speaking, overall, Godzilla is mostly a neutral force leaning on villain in terms of the story. He's a wild animal and is just doing what animals do. The only time Godzilla is an outright villain is in GMK, where he is essentially the possessed spirit of Godzilla by restless souls of those killed in Japan in World War II. Look, the series has a scene where Godzilla flies into a giant monster made of sewage. You gotta expect something to sound pretty ludicrous out loud. In the show series, he is the antagonist by default until Ghidorah the free-headed monster, where he is now a neutral force, and by destroying all monsters, he goes full hero. But then, the 1984 film Reset happens, and he's been a neutral antagonist ever since. He really isn't even a good guy in 2014. While he doesn't attack the humans and such, he also doesn't exactly care about them. He's just here to kill those bugs and then go back to bed. Now, the most famous misconception is the dual-ending myth of King Kong vs. Godzilla. The keyword here is myth. As in, it's not true. It's made up. The film ends the same way in both cuts. The only difference is some translations and audio editing. Whereas in the Japanese versions, you hear both Godzilla and Kong roar as the end pops up. In the English version, which is the only version you can get over here unless you don't mind importing a regional on DVD, only Kong roars. The dialogue is also more ambiguous in the Japanese version, where the American version makes it seem more Kong favoring. Despite this, Toha has come out in many cases to claim Kong to be the undisputed winner in both versions. The reason for Kong winning is due to his popularity at the time globally eclipsing Godzilla. This is why he is seen as the underdog and good guy, and Godzilla is the antagonist. Also another misconception here, what color is Godzilla? Oh shit, he's gray. Lastly, one thing you need to come to terms with for these films, these are not wrestling matches. The monster fights are only ever just a piece of the full picture. At most, Godzilla and friends get about a third of screen time, if that. You will always have the human storyline. Some storylines may not be that great, but those are pretty interesting. That's why I recommend the Hasty series so much as a starter after watching the first one, since you have an ongoing storyline to follow and a main reoccurring character with Miki Sagusa. 
Oh, and one last thing I find kind of funny. Every monster has their own copyright icon. You'll see this on merchandise of them and on the backs of DVDs and Blu-rays of the movies they're in. The funny thing here is that the icon for Godzilla himself is not from any film or Toho made drawing, but is instead taken from the 1980s Marvel Comics run. Yeah, Marvel put out a Godzilla comic series where he fought the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, Ant-Man, and a bunch of others. And won. So if you're worried about King of the Monsters going up against the Avengers 4, don't worry. He wins this fight canonically. Alright, so you watched a good chunk of the film and now consider yourself to be a fan of the series. So now what do you do? Well, there's plenty of YouTube channels that you can look into to get some more kaiju goodness. There's a pretty big list of channels I personally follow and recommend to you to watch. They talk about the films, merchandise, such as toys and figures, artwork, news, what have you. Please look at this list and pause if you need to see. Also, be note that these channels may be kaiju focused, but may not necessarily always upload videos about that. Please do not harass these people if they do not upload content you're looking for. They have the right to upload whatever they choose. Also, Godzilla merchandise is a big rabbit hole that I can't even begin to touch on right now. So these guys will let you know everything. Just be sure to, as the cool kids say, collect responsibly. N no, seriously, collect responsibly. Look at these prices! So that should just about do it for this guide. I hope I covered everything you need to know about this series to get into it. If there's any other questions you have, ask me down below. If you liked what you saw, maybe you could subscribe, you know? That'd be cool, I guess. 